Liberate IT is an Oracle NetSuite solution provider that has been servicing Australian and New Zealand companies since 2011. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, the latest of our customer webinars for our new release, 21.2. I'm Andrew Linegar. I'm the Relationship Manager for Liberate IT. I'm really excited about uh, today's session. I'm really looking forward to it. Of course, disappointed that uh, we won't be able to do that in person uh, this time around. A bit surprised by that. I thought uh, our last March event was the last one, but uh, hey, uh, really looking forward to next year and very hopeful that we'll be able to do this in person then. Uh, why we like doing these things is to keep you informed. Uh, NetSuite is an important investment for you. So we wanna always make sure that you get the most out of it. It's twice yearly updates are part of your subscription. And so if you've explored some features a few years ago, uh, but ruled them out due to NetSuite not quite having the functionality you need, it's good to occasionally review these. And these um, twice yearly updates really uh, fills the gaps I've noticed with some of those things. We also love doing these sessions as usually it's a great opportunity for you to network with other people who use NetSuite. I particularly enjoy seeing someone new to the platform pick the brains of an experienced user. I think the sharing of knowledge and experience benefits everyone. It's a shame we're all missing out on this, but like I said, hope, hopeful that we can do this again in March. The rate are really pleased to be partnering with NetSuite. In fact, it's the only solution that we sell, implement and support. We genuinely believe it helps our customers grow their businesses in the most cost-effective way possible no matter what the size or complexity. I'm really proud to be working with a team here at Liberate who are experts at what they do. Not only are they experts in NetSuite, but they also bring with them a range of industry knowledge and experience. And so are able to marry these together to craft the best solution for you. And by the end of today, I hope you will get to know us all a little bit better. But enough of that, let's uh, move on with today's session. So here's the program. Uh, we are going to uh, start off with Paul Beatty, our GM. Uh, we're going to move to Tony, who's uh, head of channel for ANZ to say a few words from NetSuite. And also Brendan, one of the senior account uh, channel account managers who's looking after us at the moment. Then you'll get to, to meet the team. Uh, they will be uh, going through all the latest release features and um, what you might want to get the most out of. So uh, uh, listen to them. Uh, we'll be wrapping up at that approximately 1.45 if we've timed it right. Uh, and then if you're new to NetSuite and um, you haven't been through a new release process before, Hamill, our support manager, will take you through that. Um, and it's going to be a great session. Looking forward to that. Just some housekeeping before I kick off. I'm recording today's session. We will be posting that onto our YouTube channel. Uh, and also our resources page of our website. So if you want to see our previous ones, um, they're all there, all sitting there. And if you want to get notified of, uh, of any new one that we, we put up, I'd really encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That'd be great. Uh, we also regularly do a NetSuite 101 for new users. So whether your, your organization has been with NetSuite for years, but you're new to the organization, I re really encourage you to check those out there. They're really helpful for you to get across the whole NetSuite solution. Uh, we will be doing a Q&A for each of our consultants at the end of their sessions. Really encourage you to put the, uh, your questions in the Q&A. Uh, I'll read those out to the consultants and um, we'll get those, those answered. So you don't have to wait till the very end of the, of the session today. Uh, and I think that is it. So without any further ado, I will hand over to um, Paul Beatty. Paul, hi. Hi, Andrew, thank you very much. Um, hello, everybody. Welcome to Liberate IT's virtual event. Uh, as always, uh, time with NetSuite's twice yearly release cycle. Um, but as Andrew said, as of the last three user events, also timed with level four lockdown in New Zealand. Uh, I mean, on that, we actually have a booking and a deposit uh, in the maritime room in uh, the Viaduct Harbour, and, and that's been moved four times now. In fact, we actually booked it originally to coincide with 
uh, the America's Cup. And my word, that seems a long, long time ago now. So yes, apologies that once again, I can't have a beer with you all this afternoon. I mean, meeting all of our customers at the user events is something I really look forward to. I know all the consultants look forward to it as well and the support team and everyone else at Liberate. That mingling, that networking, introducing customers to other customers who can share solutions and, and, and basically help each other. Um, I mean, it's just part, been part of our DNA since we started 10 years ago. I mean, and that was when there were literally six customers around a fairly small table. Uh, this upgrade cycle was, and again, this is very disappointing for me personally, it was going to include our very first user event in Brisbane. And again, I was, I was looking to get over to Brisbane to you know, access that, that Australian New Zealand bubble and finally say hello to everyone in Australia again, which I haven't been over for a good, well, 18 months now. And yes, I think like us all, we're very much looking forward to getting things back to normal and being able to fly back between the two countries is just routine. I mean, Liberate is set up as, as a one, yeah, two countries, operating in two countries, but we literally look at it as one country. We're one organization and flying backwards and forwards within Australia and New Zealand, it doesn't make any difference to us. Um, yeah, so, I mean, here we are, but, you know, I said there were six people originally, there's something like 120 people on this event, and, uh, you know, just the way that Liberate is growing based only on NetSuite is, is really something we're still really excited about, and there's a lot of growth left to go. Um, I guess we need to talk about COVID, uh, a quick note on COVID, um, I hope you're all keeping well, uh, first and foremost personally keeping well, that your loved ones, your friends and your families are well. Uh, and I hope that business is going okay. From my chats with customers, business owners, managers, it appears that everyone has adapted well. And I mean, it does constantly amaze me that, you know, just how resilient New Zealand and Aussie businesses are and, and just how adaptable we all are. You know, it's one thing to weather the usual business ups and downs and, you know, that's what makes you a good business owner or manager is weathering those things. But it's quite another thing to keep a business going and growing through a pandemic. And look, I've sent a lot of emails out to everybody and a lot of personal chats. Is there any way that Liberate can help, uh, whether it's giving free advice, optimizing NetSuite for remote working? So I hasten to add, you all should be doing, uh, have NetSuite set up that way anyway. Um, or getting through cash flow issues when you really need some work done by Liberate, yeah, just reach out to me. Just reach out to Andrew. We'll do what we can to help. Um, I also want to say just a really big thank you uh, for your understanding when at times Liberate's consultants have not been able to get to site or, or they've had to rearrange meetings due to personal needs. And, and by that, I mean, read that as literally children in the background, spouses in the background. Yeah, as you all know, your Liberate is set up from day one as a virtual office company. We don't have a physical office. So all our guys do have proper setups in their home offices, but what they aren't used to is having the fam, the family around during the day. And I appreciate your patients uh, while, while they, uh, they manage this, this reality at the moment. Uh, our 10 year anniversary, yes, as I mentioned in the last user group, uh, we're 10 years old, we're planning to have lots of parties. That's uh, obviously uh, not happened quite as we hoped and uh, with the current bubble deflated, it looks like it's actually gonna be next year before we have the big shindig, shindig with the Aussie Liberate folks and the New Zealand folks all in one location again. Uh, but hey, that's fine, an 11 year anniversary party. But on that, you know, we've still got these customers that have been with us 10 years. The next one up is um, a company called Navali. Um, you know, 10 years ago, Craig Pinker and uh, a whole of his colleagues uh, came along and uh, talked to us. We only had two or three customers at that time and took a leap of faith and 10 years later, Hey, we're just going through a big optimization with them because their business has grown, has changed. They're now in multiple countries around the world and we're optimizing, helping to optimize NetSuite because they're pretty smart users themselves. Um, and it's just great to have these guys still with us 10 years later. 
Um, oh, yes, on Aussie folks. Uh, if you've been on LinkedIn or, in fact, anywhere on the business social networks, you have noticed, because he's hard to miss, he's got something like 10,000 LinkedIn followers, is that Steve Pyre has now moved to Australia. It's been 18 months COVID-induced delay from when the decision was made, but he's decided to take the, the plunge, uh, COVID or no COVID, because we really want to show our faith in Australia. And that now means that two of Liberate's senior leadership team are in Australia. One in Brisbane with Steve and Andrew in Sydney. And the consulting team just continues to grow and grow there as well. Uh, it's our biggest growth uh, area is, is Australia, and we expect uh, major things happening there over the next couple of years. Now, some, some big exciting news, and Andrew, if you could just move the slide on. Uh, a few months back, we were nominated for, and then we won Oracle's NetSuite Excellence in Customer Service Award. I'll just say that again, because it's pretty exciting for us, is the Oracle NetSuite Excellence in Customer Service Award. It was really big for us because it's what Liberate is based on, doing the best job possible to help businesses use NetSuite to become more efficient, to scale, to grow. That's what makes us tick. It's what makes me tick. I love talking to businesses that they have managed to grow uh, from a startup. They're using some very small systems and now it's time to take the next big step. And I love getting NetSuite in there and I love going back year after year and seeing them grow and what NetSuite and Liberate and the Liberate consultants have done to help them grow. Um, you know, in the end, we, when we started 10 years ago, we designed the company along a different business model to the usual ERP providers. And in the usual model, utilization percentages are everything. And you know, you're after that short-term profit. We, we, we took a view to look for the long game. And besides making it a lot more fun to do implementations because we weren't looking at the dollars and the utilization percentages the entire time, uh, it's rewarded us year after year, both on a happiness quotient of, of, of being able to do a good job, but also when our customers and our alliances uh, recommend us to the network when those people are in the ERP market. And it's just been, a, a, quite frankly, a fun way to grow a business. Uh, I'm often told by our consultants that, that one of the reasons they enjoy working at Liberate is that, is that at Liberate is all about the customer and doing what it takes to get customers in a successful position with their NetSuite system. I mean, as you probably know, everyone at Liberate is a NetSuite geek. As Andrew said, it's all we do, which makes our parties can be pretty boring because it's all about the next big supply allocation model out of NetSuite. Uh, or whatever the next neat feature coming out is. And you know, the guys that have decided to call Liberate home, you know, they love learning new things about NetSuite and then they love sharing that knowledge, both internally to each other and then on to the customers. And, and I think you've all uh, been part of that journey when one consultant or another has got very excited about a new bit of functionality that they can see making magic happen at your business. Yeah, so yes, that's a long way of saying that uh, for Liberate and for everybody at Liberate to be recognized by Oracle NetSuite for the uh, excellence in customer service was a really, really great honor for us. Now, we um, are proud to announce the launch of uh, a, a new bit of uh, functionality, a, a, a new exciting model and that's what I was talking about just earlier about sharing our knowledge and then sharing our friends' knowledge, whether it be some of our customers, whether they be uh, some of the business leaders that we know that don't use NetSuite, but they are influencers out there. So we have introduced uh, a podcast, a Liberate podcast called Digital Liberation. It's hosted by our very own Julius. Uh, and you know, guests will be encouraged to unpack digital transformation trends to talk about change management, to talk about ERP in general, not just NetSuite, but ERP in general, to talk about cloud, to talk about finance, business, and a few you know, social fun things as well. Um, the first two episodes are out there now um, and are available to download and watch. You can head to our 
YouTube channel. And as Andrew said, please uh, be a friend of our YouTube channel. Um, and uh, yeah, the first two is me talking and Steve talking. Um, I hope that my, my spiel doesn't put you to sleep too much. Um, the last thing I want to show, and literally it's just simply, here they all are. It's been a long time for some of you to see one of the Liberate consultants because of COVID out there. So I just thought I'd put the photo up. Everyone's still here. Everyone is still working really hard for you. Uh, they're looking forward to get back on site. Some have been able to get on site, some haven't. Uh, as you see, there's something like 30, 36 people um, in that photo. There's people missing there that, that, that literally couldn't fit in. We're continuing to grow and everyone there is a NetSuite geek and everyone there is keen to uh, have a chat to you about how you're using your NetSuite system at some stage. Anyway, enough about me um, and, and Liberate. Uh, let's go and find out a little bit more about uh, NetSuite. But first of all, I'd like to hand it over to Tony Field uh, from Oracle NetSuite. Last thing I'd like to say is, yeah, hope you learn lots today and fingers crossed the next user events, as Andrew said, in both Australia and in New Zealand, will all be able to be in the same room together to be able to share a beer or wine. Talk to you all soon. Thanks, Paul. So uh, good afternoon, everyone. And um, I just hope you're all safe and well. And if you are in lockdown, I can sympathise with you. I'm in week 12 here for me in Sydney. So yeah, looking forward to getting out and uh, having those beers as well and, and definitely getting a haircut soon too. Uh, I'm only going to take a couple of minutes of your time, uh, as I'm sure you want to get into the more exciting stuff. Uh, for those that don't know me, I head up uh, NetSuite channel sales here across Australia and New Zealand. Uh, again, first, I just want to say thank you for all of you taking the time out of your day to learn more about uh, the latest update to NetSuite. And especially thank you to Liberate IT, of course, for, for running events such as this to provide you with all the latest information. Uh, you might be interested to know that NetSuite has now hit 27,000 customers worldwide. Uh, so that came about just uh, this week, this was announced. Uh, that's an additional 4,000 customers in the past 12 months, which is very exciting for us. Uh, I think it's also worth pointing out the importance that Oracle places on NetSuite as part of their growth strategy. Uh, you know, that can't be underestimated. And that only means good news for all of us, right, as Oracle continue, continues to invest in all things NetSuite. At a local level, we place great importance on Liberate IT as one of our top partners in ANZ. And as you heard from Paul for over 10 years, uh, we genuinely appreciate the innovative ways that Liberate service their customers. And particularly excited to, to hear about the digital podcast that they've just launched as well. Uh, as you've heard through the, the passion and you know from Paul's voice around customer service and the you know, the geekiness which they aspire to, which is fantastic. You know, the key thing that Liberate pride themselves on is their customer service. Uh, keeping customers like yourselves informed about new updates uh, is just one example of how they continue to invest and provide that post-implementation post support. And it's along with other services that I'm aware of, such as optimi optimization visits, you know, the webinar-based training that they perform, the general support, uh, solutioning of process issues, all of those different areas, right, to help make <clears throat> your deployment of NetSuite more efficient. And I'm sure many of you realize that's the value, you know, that you get out of dealing with someone like Liberate IT uh, in the first place. Uh, as Paul alluded to, or as he presented, you know, recently we had our Japan and Asia Pacific Partner Summit. And in that summit, you know, I was very pleased to, to see that Liberate IT received that JPAC award for excellence in customer service. Uh, and it was in recognition for all those extra things that they provide you know, to their customers uh, above and beyond the stock standard support services. So Liberate truly has a stable of happy customers. And that's also evidenced by the fact the majority of their customers are actually referenceable as well. So look, again, congratulate, congratulations, Paul, uh, Steve, Andrew, and the entire Liberate team uh, for the excellent service that pr you provide your customers. Uh, it, it is recognised and it's truly well deserved. So look, with that, I'm going to leave you in the safe hands of Liberate uh, to learn more about the upcoming feature releases. Uh, thanks for your continued support of NetSuite. Uh, and thank you again for Liberate AT to running these events uh, and keeping you all informed. 
So have a fantastic day and uh, over to you, Brendan. Thanks, Tony. Um, g'day, my name is Brendan Loffenberg. I'm part of the NetSuite ANZ channel team. I'm based out of New Zealand, uh, helping our partners and our customers. Thanks Liberate IT for inviting me today. Um, and thank you for attending. Um, as Tony touched on it, it's, it's great to see you investing your time um, in these release notes and um, hopefully you'll find some great new features that'll help your organization. I won't take up too much of your time. I just quickly wanted to talk through our roadmap um, and some of the new modules we've just released and some that are coming soon. Um, this is the safe harbor statement that's up on your screen now, if you can quickly have a read through it. Basically, it's just saying that um, anything you see from me today, please don't make any purchases based on that. If you see anything that's of interest to you, reach out to Andrew um, and Andrew and the team will go through it in more detail with you. Thanks, Andrew. Um, so NetSuite WMS is currently available. It's one of our latest modules. Um, this previously was a bit of a gap for NetSuite. So I'm really glad that NetSuite's invested in this and the feedback from our customers who, who um, have implemented and are using the WMS module has been really positive. Um, so if, if you've got um, a warehouse set up and, and you're looking to um, improve your efficiency and some optimization around your inventory, um, please reach out to Andrew um, and he'll be able to help you determine if this is a good fit. Uh, thanks, Andrew. Um, so the next one I want to talk about is, um, is e-commerce. As Tony and Paul touched on, COVID's obviously had a really big impact over the last um, 18 or 20 months. And we've seen a lot of businesses move online. Um, NetSuite's had an e-commerce offering for quite some time, Sweet Commerce Advance. Um, and, it, and we're now moving to sort of a tiered e-commerce offering. And we'll have three different products in that offering. So Sweet Commerce and Vance, which is our full bells and whistles offering, um, will we'll stay there. And then we're going to have Sweet Commerce Standard, which is a bit of a cut down version of Sweet Commerce Advance. It's a, it's a much more um, user friendly way of customizing an e-commerce platform. So if, if you don't have the resources to have developers and full customization, um, of, of a site and you don't need that, then Sweet Commerce Standard will be great. And then the other one is Sweet Commerce My Account. Um, and this is one that I'm really excited about. It's a non-transacting e-commerce offering. Um, so it's kind of more of a customer service portal. So if you offer subscriptions to your customers um, and you want them to be able to go in and modify that, or if, if you um, provide quotes to your customers and you want them to go online and accept those quotes and then download invoices, um, this is really, really great. So Sweet Commerce Standard and Sweet Commerce My Account are currently only available in North America, um, but they're being piloted in, um, in Australia at the moment. So hopefully they'll be in, in ANZ shortly. Next slide, please, Andrew. Oh, perfect, okay, so, um, so that's it for me. I wanted to say thanks for uh, the Liberate team for inviting me along today. Um, please enjoy the rest of the presentation. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks so much, Brendan, really appreciate it. And thanks, Tony, as well. All right, we're going to move on to the 21.2 highlights. And so we're going to start with uh, general admin and accounting with Mira. Mira, I'm going to ask you a, a couple of questions about yourself. How long have you been using NetSuite for? And, uh, and um, what's an interesting thing about you that people might not know? <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Um, oh, you're putting me on the spot there a little bit, Andrew. You're um, <laughs> Um, so my name is Mira Smith. I've worked with uh, Liberate IT for nearly three years now. Um, and I've been using NetSuite for, I think, probably about four years because um, in my previous role as the finance manager in the business, I implemented NetSuite. Awesome. Yeah, so my um, background is... Um, Oh, sorry, to answer your question, something interesting that people may not know about me. Um, let me say, I can speak, read and write four different languages. Nice. Yeah. I, I've, now, I've now had one. <laughs> <laughs> cool. and, then, and then even then. Thanks, Mira. <laughs> I'll be That's quiet right, now. Yeah, no, it's all good. Um, so yeah, just to give you a little bit of background on um, 
myself. So in my past life, I used to be an accountant. So that is generally my area of exp expertise. So anything to do with accounting and finance, really, you know, from setting up your chart of accounts into all the way into how it reflects into your financial reporting and statements. So I can help you around with that. And also I've worked in several businesses where uh, we've had a lot to do with inventory management. So wholesale distribution is also another vertical that I am quite familiar with and experienced with as well. So enough about me, let's move on to some of the new features and enhancements that will become available in your account once it's upgraded. So um, first of all, we're just going to cover off um, some areas around general administration. So pre in uh, support for new customer scheduled maintenance. In the previous release, they introduced the customer scheduled maintenance page, which gave customers the ability to pick the date and time for plan maintenance. And this, you know, enabled you to minimize any impact on your business operations, just in case, you know, they happen to schedule it when you're operating. So they've now added an increasing number of maintenance activities in this page and uh, including some routine maintenance and also the account move to OCI. Core administration permissions feature enabled by default. So by default, the core administration permission feature is now enabled on all accounts. So this is a feature that can be enabled for role and it gives the role access to a functionality that's currently only accessible to the admin role. So you can use core administration permissions to customize a role so that it behaves almost like the admin role while also restricting access to other areas of NetSuite and you use your role permissions and restrictions to do that. So to give you an example, you might have someone who manages NetSuite as the system admin, but you may not necessarily want, to want them to see the HR details of employees. So you can use this feature and this um, to customize a role where they can actually do that and restrict it from some areas. Um, you can assign core administration permissions to any role by just checking the core administration permissions box on the role. Expense report policies available with custom approvals. So if you have expense report policies, you can now apply them when you submit an expense report with custom approvals. Expense reports can be in open, pending, approve, or reject approval status. So a warning message will appear if your expense report doesn't pass all of the policies. So for all user roles except the admin role, expense reports must meet the defined policy criteria before the users can save them. When you log in with the admin role, you should evaluate each of the expense report before you save the record. Previously, the expense reports were not evaluated against the policies when you use custom approvals. And as of 2021.2, NetSuite will no longer support the following browsers. So that'd be the Internet Explorer 11, Microsoft Edge HTML, and any Safari versions prior to 10.1. So if you use any of these browsers, you should switch to another supported browser because NetSuite will no longer test or address any issues related to these browsers. Um, if you use an unsupported browser after your account is upgraded, the NetSuite login and two-factor authentication page may not work as expected. And you may also experience loss of functionality on other NetSuite pages. So to avoid any unexpected behavior, you should switch to a supported browser. So generally we uh, tend to recommend either using Google Chrome or Edge Chromium. Um, moving on to some enhancements in the general accounting space. Um, we have a new rate provider for currency exchange rate integration. So as an enhancement to this feature, HSBC is now a currency exchange rate provider. So HSBC is a global bank with expertise in multiple currencies, and you can use the same methods such as currency triangulation for obtaining exchange rates from HSBC. So um, in the last uh, few releases, they actually removed a couple of the providers um, Refinitiv and Thomson Reuters, and the only one available at the moment is actually Zignite. So now you will have the ability to choose either Zignite or HSBC as your provider. Uh, and you can select this under accounting preferences and general subject. Enhancement to accounting book visibility by role. So this release includes updates to how you select which accounting books are accessible to users by role. You can grant a role access to all accounting books, and users with this role can automatically access, access new accounting books. So for each role, you can select one of the following options. 
Um, you can um, select all where the role can see all accounting books. Primary, where the role can only see the primary accounting book. Primary and selected, where they can see primary accounting book and then any secondary book that you select. Preference to allow non-posting changes and closed periods by default. So next week now includes a preference called allow non-GL changes as set by default to allow them in closed periods by default. So when this is set next week, we'll automatically check that box for each new accounting period that we create. So um, currently what happens is if you want to create um, make any non-posting changes, you have to go um, into the accounting period, check the box individually for every accounting period, and then go and change uh, the detail on the transaction. An example would be, you know, you might have an invoice and you just want to change the memo detail on the invoice. It doesn't change your GL, but it's still in a closed period, so it doesn't let you edit it at the moment. Um, so you had to do that for each period in the past, but with this new feature, you can set it up as a global preference, so that is automatically ticked for every new accounting period that's created. Um, just wanting to note, it won't apply to any accounting periods that already exist, it will only apply to new accounting periods, so a new financial year that you may create. Uh, you can find the setting under accounting preferences and general subject. Advanced numbering duplicate detection for imported transactions. Next week now supports duplicate number document number detection for advanced numbering. So when you import a transaction, um, next week we'll determine which numbering rule applies to it using any rule criteria that you've already set up. So it'll check if a transaction with the same document number already exists for that specific rule. And if it detects a duplicate, it will um, take one of the following actions based on which setting you've uh, selected. So there are three different settings. One is an the first one is called no warning. So next week will not warn you when an imported transaction uses a duplicate document number and it will import, import all the transactions. The next is warn only. So it'll warn you, but it'll still import all the transactions. And the last one is warn and block where it will warn you and it won't import the transactions. So um, the behavior of these options when you save any transactions that you're manually creating doesn't change. So this is only where um, you know, where you're importing transactions. So to set, it, to set this up, accounting preferences, preferences, items, transactions, subtype. And lastly, supply planning, changing asset and cost accounts. So um, users can now actually select to make changes to cost or asset account on an item record and only have it reflect in future transactions. And there's a new preference where you can set that under accounting preferences. So um, what happens currently is if you, uh, when you set up an item record, you have to choose an asset account, an income account and a cost account. But in the future, for example, uh, you decide that you wanna actually change the coding, where you can go and change it in the item record, but you will normally get an error that says the transaction is locked. So what it tries to do, it tries to flush that change back into all your historical transactions. And if your transactions are in a closed period, you're not gonna be able to change it. So this new preference, what it does is it doesn't touch any of your historical transactions and it only becomes applicable uh, for future transactions. Um, the next area where we do have some um, improvements would be banking. Um, I just wanted to give everyone a reminder of the um, deprecation of reconcile bank statement and reconcile credit card statement pages. So these pages are not deprecated. They're still accessible, but they will be, uh, they are scheduled for removal in future releases. So therefore um, you should adopt the redesign bank reconciliation feature, which is account reconciliation. And that includes the match bank data and reconcile account statement pages. So these pages will enable you to match and reconcile the transaction without requiring any third party tools. So to be able to use this, you actually have to, you have to go into the GL account of your bank um, and check a box that's called use match bank data and reconcile account statement. Any new bank accounts, um, sorry, new bank GL accounts that are created after the new release will have this box automatically checked. CSV um, parser plugin now available in bank statement parsers. So in the bank statement parsers suite app, in the new version, you will be able to use a CSV parser plugin to import bank statement files in CSV format into NextWeek. So to use the um, 
plugin, you can select CSV plugin implementation in the transaction parser field of the format profile. And when you do this, you'll see uh, the following subtabs. So one is a field mapping where you can map your CSV column headers to the matching NetSuite CSV parser configuration fields. And then the next one is formatting preferences, where you can set up your preferred data formatting preferences based on your CSV file data. So you can download the CSV bank statement template file from the parser configuration subtab and use it to format your bank statement files for import, or alternatively, you can just use your own CSV file. Um, some enhancements to the matching and reconciliation pages. So there's now a bulk matching or select all option for account transactions. So in the match bank data page, um, on the left, you have your bank transactions. On the right, you have your account transactions. The account transactions box now, a window now includes a select all box. So you can check or clear all the boxes for all the items that are visible in the current page of the grid. And then in the bottom section, um, the way the selected items from the grids will appear and pop up windows for viewing matched or cleared transactions are now paginated. So the bottom section will now be paginated. So. Um, what that means is, you know, uh, paginated meaning instead of scrolling all the way down to keep looking for um, more and more and more lines, you have to move from page one to page two, page three. So it's um, for a large number of transactions, pagination can help improve the performance because the browser doesn't have to display all of the selected transactions at, at once. And you can choose um, how many rows the bottom section can display per page under the number of rows in list segments preference. That's a user preference that you can uh, select in your set preferences. Each page can display a maximum 500 rows at a time. Automatically clear held transactions. So previously when you migrate a held statement from the original rec page to the redesign page, you have to clear all transactions from the matched bank data page. So a held statement is one where you've begun to reconcile but you've chosen to complete later. So then uh, the system automatically clears all held transactions and displays them in the reconciled account statement page. Um, clear, um, sorry, enhancements to navigation. <clears throat> the reconciled account statement page now includes links to the match bank data page and also reconcil uh, reconciliation summary pages. So um, when you actually select an account on the reconciled account statement page, you can click on those links and it'll take you to those, those pages automatically. Enhancements to adding transactions. So prior to this release, when you add a new transaction on the match bank data page, the payer list didn't display all types of entities. So now the payer list does include uh, the types of entities that are available for the corresponding transaction. So any newly created transaction will appear at the top of the list in the bottom section. Partially completed import status. <clears throat> this is a new status which is shown when you do uh, bank and credit card account imports. Um, the specific errors will also be shown and then, and then the users will have the ability to edit and correct. Moving on to the next new feature in banking, automated cash application. Um, so this is actually a brand new feature and a brand new page. And this is probably something that has been missing um, from our bank reconciliation feature in the past. So in the past, when you actually loaded your bank uh, statement, you'll have all your bank statement transactions, and then you might have some payment um, to match against um, in the account transactions um, grid. Um, if you didn't, you'd have to find the customer or the transaction, go and create the payment, come back to the match bank data page, refresh it, and then it'll show up. So what this new feature, this new page will do is you can use this page to automatically create payments or transactions from this page. So you don't have to go away from the page to go and look for the transaction. So it automatically matches any imported bank payments with open invoices in NetSuite, and then the GL payments will be automatically created and applied. So when you import the bank lines that don't have matching customer payments, the automated cash application feature, it will um, match it against open invoices, and then it's going to generate a batch of GR customer payments in next week, and then automatically applies them to the invoices. If you receive a high volume of customer payments daily, this is going to help you apply them to open air accounts in bulk. You can then find or update customer on the imported payments and also auto-generate GR customer payments with just one click. You can set up some intelligence, uh, intelligent matching logic to identify open invoices for imported customer payments. You can edit or update the cash allocation on identified invoices. You can find new invoices. 
and then you can also auto apply invoices to GL customer payments. And then lastly, once you've done all of that, you can automatically reconcile the customer GL payments against imported customer payments. So now let's look at what it looks like. So that there, the picture there is basically what the page will look like. Um, so you can generate customer payments from imported bank statement lines as um, I spoke about before. So I do actually recommend uh, a manual import um, to ensure optimal customer mapping. So this actually works for, uh, it, sorry, the automated cash application feature enables you to view all imported bank lines with a positive amount that's not matched with the corresponding account transaction. So um, one thing we recommend, the reason why we recommend a manual import is that there have been some issues with automated bank feeds where some of the data is coming through and it's been merging the columns of, um, you know, the, the name column together with the memo column. Um, so the, it might actually be a little bit hard to actually create some matching rules and, you know, for next week to identify which which customer it's coming from, what's the invoice um, reference number. So if you were to actually manually import your statements, you'll be able to separate those and you know uh, make sure that they fall into the correct columns. And therefore you can then set up some matching rules around that. Okay, um, you can, um, sorry, Andrew, could you go on back please, thank you. So you can actually, um, so you can view the amount that's, uh, the payment amount that's been applied to each invoice. The system will automatically allocate the payment amount to the invoice and it'll take into consideration whether the invoice is pre-allocated and other payments. You can adjust the applied amounts on each invoice. You can view all open invoices for a customer and then you can include or exclude any invoices. And then um, if there is no invoice number, in your bank statement. Next, we will provide a list of suggested invoices to which the payment can be applied. So the system actually makes these suggestions based on the apply payments without invoice numbers preference. So there are three different preferences that you can use. Apply by payment amount first, then to oldest invoice. So this is the default preference. Um, and uh, yeah, so basically it just looks for anything with the exact match with the payment amount and uh, if doesn't find one, then it'll just apply to the oldest invoice. And then the next one is apply to oldest invoice by date of aging preference. Um, it determines the oldest invoices based on your aging reports preferences as well. So you, it, you know, you can choose to have your aging reports based on the transaction date or the due date. So this automatic cash application will use that preference to suggest the oldest invoice. Um, and then lastly, you can just keep the payment unapplied if it doesn't find an invoice and you can just go and manually apply that payment in the match vendor page. Thanks, Andrew. Um, so set customer mapping rules for automatic matching. So you can view the name of the customer to which, to which each imported bank line belong. Um, the system can automatically assign a customer to a bank line using an exact match a partial match or preferred match. If no match is achieved, you can select a customer. You can create customer mapping rules that the um, system can remember and use to map customers to future incoming bank lines. So if you look at that um, screenshot there, you can see that the uh, in the bank segment, the payer is called lead advertising, but in next week, your customer is called calling and traders. So you can actually set a mapping rule around that, that you know, every time you get a payment from lead advertising, it's um, matched against calling with traders. The generated payments are automatically submitted to your reconcile account statement page. So what that means is that you don't have to do this process and then go back to your match bank data page and then match it again. So it automatically matches it and submits it to your reconcile account statement page. So in summary, um, what the automatic cash application feature does is you can perform cash application on imported bank lines, irrespective of method of import, whether you manually import your bank statement or you have an automated bank feed. You can use automated matching rules to support matching on invoice IDs based on payment application preference. All of this is going to lead to a reduction in the time and cost of payment entry and invoice clearing because it's a one-step process. It will eliminate data entry errors, which because you know when you 
enter a customer payment at the moment you can enter any number really so you could have typos but with this option it will automatically match the number which means it will then lower your day, days of sales at sending and improve your AI aging. So that's um, everything in the banking space. Uh, electronic bank payments, sorry, one more thing in the banking space, electronic bank payments and transfers. So the payment file administration rollback for in transit payments. So the PFA for in transit payments can now be rolled back using the new rollback button on the PFA page. And then there is a new preference called aggregate by pay preference. So aggregation is supported as part of electronic payment preferences for EFT, direct debit and batch processing. So at the moment, when you process an EFT batch um, on the screen, there is a little checkbox that says aggregate by pay, which means if you have 10 invoices for one supplier, it will make one payment for that supplier. So this default now can actually be set at the preference page for reflecting in the respective processing pages. So you can clear the aggregate by pay box on the electronic payments preference to turn off the aggregate by pay settings. Um, in the vendors purchasing and receiving area, there is a new uh, enhancement in the cross subsidiary positions. So centralized purchasing and billing feature. So that is a feature that already exists and you can do centralized purchasing for all your locations, but this has now been extended to all the subsidiaries. So this feature will enable consolidation of requisitions into from any subsidiary into a single centralized PO. Regardless of which subsidiary places the requisition or purchase order, the centralized purchasing and billing will enable you to receive purchase goods and services in any subsidiary and location in your company. Uh, company. When you um, receive and pay for a PO in a different subsidiary, automatic cross charges will be posted to balance the ledger and into company accounts. Each target subsidiary receives their part of the centralized purchase order and the set target location and generates their own receipt. So to enable cross subsidiary requisitions, you must enable both the centralized purchasing and billing feature and also the requisitions feature. Expense commitment standard budget validation feature. And this is only available if you have advanced um, financials module. So you can create budgets uh, for specific accounts, segments, and period combinations. Um, you can uh, prevent overspending by validating purchase requests, orders, and vendor bills. We do have, um, moving on to some uh, additions in the taxation area. So we do have some enhancements for Australia specifically. So the AU report subtab has now been renamed to AUS reporting subtab. So this is added to uh, Australia vendor records and transactions, um, specifically vendor bill, bill payment records for an Australian vendor. The ANZ, ANZ localization preferences set up so on this page, you can actually set up your company preferences for Australia and New Zealand customer vendor records. If you're an admin, uh, it'll be under setup NZ localization and preferences. Airbnb and NZBN verification, verification warning. So there'll be a, there's a new preference on the ANZ localization preferences and also set preferences uh, pages. You can use this field to set up a warning banner to prevent invalid ABN and NZBN from being entered on customer and vendor records. Australia Payment Times Report, PTR, uh, for small business supplier identification. So in preparation for the PTR, a new small business checkbox is added on the AUS reporting subtab for Australian vendor reports. So you can check this box to identify vendors as small business suppliers and therefore reportable for PTR. Supplier ABN list report. You can use this page to generate a list of your vendors ABNs and then export it to a CSV file and then run it through the SBI tool for small business identification. You can then check the small business boxes of the identified small businesses to include it in the payment times reporting. If you're an admin, you can access this page at setup ends at the localization and supplier list. And then last one would be Australia taxable payments annual report. TPAR enhancements. So uh, 
With this report, you can now ex, uh, there's an export PDF icon, so you have the option to view and download your TPAR as PDF. There's a summary report, so you can view a list of all your TPAR reportable bill payments for payee and export it to a spreadsheet. And then there's also a detailed report where when you view the summary, you can drill down to the bill payment and view all the reported bills. You can also export this report to a spreadsheet. Um, and that concludes all the new features and enhancements in the general administration and accounting space. Um, do we have... Mira, yes, we have a question for you, which is awesome. Uh, and thanks thanks for sharing that. That's, that was really good. Uh, so in terms of the bank import matching process, uh, mm -hmm. the question from Yvonne is, could that process rather be done by invoice number rather than customer number? as a lot of uh, their customers give their invoice number as a reference on the bank statement. Yes, it does actually look for the invoice number as a match. Great. Yes. Great. Thanks so much. That is it for Q&A. And um, uh, I hate to be harsh, but I'm going to keep moving on, Mira, if that's okay. No, that's We're all right. Thank you. Everyone. Falling a <laughs> little bit behind time. So really appreciate that. Hey, I am now going to switch over to Brett uh, Brett, hello, how are you? Good afternoon, I'm, I'm very well, thanks, Andrew. Fantastic. Hey, quick question for you, two questions. Uh, how long have you been working with NetSuite for now? And uh, tell everyone a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so it's um, been approximately four years with NetSuite. Previous uh, to that, I've dealt with a number of different ERP systems. Um, yes, yeah, so my background is in supply chain and process optimization, and I've I guess it's 20, 20 something years, too many to too many to remember. <laughs> oh yeah. Thanks, mate. Really appreciate it. I'll uh, I'll hand over to you. Thank you. Right. Um, yeah, so what we're what we're going to talk about today is supply allocation engines. And uh, this is just a quick illustration of the the pressure that supply chains uh, have been under this year. How many times have we seen empty shelves in the last few months. So if 2021 has taught us anything, it's that being reactive is not the best approach. If we want to sure, ensure a stable supply of product, extending our supply chain visibility has been a key feature of NetSuite and supply allocation during the past couple of releases. Um, I just wanted to recap quickly on the functionality provided by supply allocation. Um, future, future supply, is allocated along with current stock on hand. We get better and more specific insight into supply dates and customer order ETAs. Stock is no longer just committed to current inventory or current stock on hand. We can allocate product orders to open purchase orders, containers, and future works orders. Supply allocation matches a future sales order to a future supply and leaves current inventory available to meet new sales orders. We can match complete order supply or partial, depending on requirement. The allocation type allows you to specify whether the allocation should be flexible and able to change in the future, or firmed up so that it does not become undone by future changes. In order to do this, we need to know and maintain shipping dates or production dates on supply orders. Maintaining the required buy date to meet customer delivery on demand orders. NetSuite Supply Allocation Engine will use these to match the demand allocation to the appropriate supply order. So what's changed? What's new in 2021.2? Well, we see that we've added more options to this release to maintain uh, to manage allocations. There's an earliest item availability function, the ability to optimize allocation for gross profit and revenue, allocate sales orders manually prior to system allocation. There's a quantity remaining field for order reservation, an allocated order number link, and available date calculation fill and kill functionality. Uh, changes on sales orders are now logged, uh, which, is, which is nice. And there have been changes made to allocation alerts. So let's have a, a bit of a look at these in more detail. The supply allocation earliest item availability page computes item and location level availability information based on simulated allocations. 
under supply allocation setup, you can set a default strategy to use for earliest item availability. The system then displays the computed availability date for each location. Earliest item availability is now also compatible with sales channel allocation. This improves the earliest availability accuracy by limiting the calculation to allocate supplies set aside for those sales channels. This functionality is targeted, uh, is targeted primarily at product-based industries, looking to create better insights into supply and specifically which strategies work best with different sources of supply. Uh, this type of information will typically be used um, by customer services reps, sales and accounts managers, uh, production and inventory planners. Optimizing for gross profit and revenue, or how do we increase productivity? Uh, what can we do to provide the best financial results? Here we have the ability to switch between strategies for maximum revenue, profit, or customer satisfaction. And as a result, we have more control over business-related objectives based on the existing supply. Here, both the gross profit and the revenue allocation optimization compute allocations to maximize the sum of gross profit or revenue on the selected sales orders lines. Manual allocation of sales orders when the supply allocation preference is set to immediate allocation after order entry, a new allocation button appears on the sales order form. This allows us to set the allocation at a time that we choose. The allocate button is available on the sales order in view mode. In this way, we can set to allocate orders in the sequence that we desire and prior to any schedule that may be running. Uh, furthermore, you can also set the line commitment to true to prevent uh, future reallocation. There's now a quantity remaining field for order reservation. That's the next slide, please, Andrew. Yep. Uh, next one, too. Thank you. This field displays unallocated item quantities. You can use this information uh, and it can help you decide how many more items you need to reserve. There's an allocated order number link. Next slide, please. The number displayed in the sales order items sub-tab um, allocated supply or allocated demand order column now provides a link to the new allocated order pop-up window. You can use this feature to navigate between demand and supply to learn whether other demands are allocated to the source supply and which supplies are allocated to demand. Okay. Right, bit of a... Yeah, there's a few lines and a few uh, few arrows in different directions, but basically this, the new allocated demand and allocated supply pop-up window displays all allocation line information. The pop-up window improves navigation across demand orders, supply orders, channel reservations, and allocations. The allocation lines display a link to the allocated supply order to see which demand uses the same supply source in the demand order, you can click on the demand order link to open up the allocated demand pop-up window. The allocated demand pop-up window shows all orders that use the same source of supply. To see sources of supply a demand order is using in the supply order, click the demand order link to open up the allocated demand pop-up window. So in a nutshell, there's far better linkages between, uh, between the different data sources. After you have enabled uh, sales channel allocations and set channel reservation supplies aside, you can navigate from the, from the allocation pop-up window to the order reservation and back again. Available date calculation fill and kill. Um, this, this feature just sounds cool. It's got the, the best name of all the enhancements. Available date calculation fill and kill. Most likely to be used uh, as a customer related strategy. This option supports fill and kill order management scenarios. Uh, the feature enable, uh, enables you to fulfill orders that need to be shipped immediately and whatever quantity is currently available. After that, the system will close it. Sales order, um, sales order line history now logs allocation changes. 
Here we can analyze changes and see just when the order was allocated or deallocated. Being logged into the system notes, we can also create save searches to extract this information. There's changes to alerts. So in 2021.2, this is what also brings uh, changes to allocation alerts. There are now allocation exceptions for works order components. And the final, the final allocation enhancement that we're looking at today is the changes to the allocate order pages. Demand order lines appear in both the transaction unit of measure and in the base unit of measure. And a new link enables reallocation prior to batch allocation being run. Okay, warehouse management enhancements. There's, there's a few of these, uh, just, just a few. Uh, there's a new WMS preference for order reallocation. Here you can clear the commitment confirm box and reallocate the items. The WMS wave release schedule page now enables you to set the status of the wave that you want to generate to one of the following options. It can be either pending release or released. And within works order picking, where previously uh, when you selected the lot or serial numbers in works orders, you could still view all the available numbers on your mobile device. Uh, however, in 2021.2, only the pre-selected lot or serial numbers will now appear as options for selections on your device. Right, thirdly, pack station enhancements. The pack station mobile app extends order fulfillment processing on your warehouse or in any location that uses a kiosk device. It supports multi-level pa uh, packing that lets you pack items into cartons and then transfer packed cartons onto pallets. The PackStation mobile app is available in the PackStation Suite app, which is shared with accounts that use NetSuite WMS. For non-WS accounts, ask your NetSuite account manager about licensing requirements. So in 2021.2, you can reuse pallets in another packing session until you ship them. Putting cartons onto pallets, you can use pallets that still have space. Orders on the same pallets must have the same shipping method and carrier. Uh, this uh, this enhancement, enhancement is aimed at reducing cost and improving efficiency when sending multiple orders to the same location. Packing station also is not dependent on WMS. Packing uses all bins on ERP or outbound staging bins for WMS, but you still need the SEM mobile as, as does the uh, NetSuite WMS. And our real-time updates. So PackStation provides some new system rules. It allows real-time packing updates to fulfillments. It lets you update fulfillment records and custom fields on order transactions in real time. You can specify a limit from one to 75 fulfillment lines to replace the default limit of 25 lines. And when you submit the orders for packing, real-time updates apply to fulfillments that do not exceed the limit. Right, auto-generate cartons and pallet IDs. This enables you uh, to use pallet IDs based on the format that you provide or define or the order number. On a kiosk device, you can view the auto-generated ID of a new carton or pallet. This rule does not apply to items that ship individually or ship um, as is, which you have auto-generated IDs by default. And that's a wrap up of the features. Uh, please feel free to reach out if you have any more questions or need any more details on any of these features. Brilliant, Brett. Thanks so much, mate. Hey, I do have a question for you already, though. Sure. Uh, the question is from Anonymous. <laughs> Will the allocation changes logged on sales orders include stock on hand that has been reallocated? Uh, stock on hand it will allocate the specific changes to the uh, to the sales order line or the purchase order line or the works order line. Um, so are you asking whether the, it shows the change just generically to the item? Well, you know, I'm not really asking the question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in that case, yeah, in that, in that case, uh, it's not logged against specifically the item, but specifically against the transaction or the line, the line change within the um, transaction. No problem. 
Look, if there's a follow-up question um, for Brett, feel free to still put in the Q&A. He'll, he'll jump on and uh, answer any of those questions that you might have. Absolutely. Um, happy to do that. All right. Ah, we've got Lass. Lass, hello. Hello. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I know. I, oh, I'm great. I know you speak multiple languages, mate. Are you are you just doing up to two languages or have you got more? Way more. Wow. <laughs> it's a competition now. How many? No, four, I think. Four sort of fluently and a few more not very fluently. But I only use English these days and Kiwi. Very, very nice. Very nice. Hey, um, a bit about yourself, mate. What area of specialty do you focus in on at NetSuite? Yeah, i um, been in the NetSuite space for about 10 years. I think I did my first implementation in 2011, 12-ish. So it's been a while. Mostly uh, manufacturing, wholesale, distribution, tangible goods uh, vertical. I do yeah. dabble in services as well, but probably my passion is in um, tangible goods, uh, manufacturing and distribution of, of those. Awesome, mate. Well, I'll um, hand over to you. All right, cool. Welcome. Um, can we jump just one back, um, Andrew? So what we'll do is we'll talk a little bit about not what's new, but what I want to hammer <laughs> into everyone and a little bit of new stuff. So MRP manufacturing mobile isn't really new. Some of the sweet apps are. So we'll uh, talk a little bit about that. Um, yeah. So um, MRP, now I, if you attended the last session that was also remote, unfortunately, this would be relatively familiar. Um, I, I just would like to hammer this in again. So any, any of our customers or NetSuite users that attend, if you are using uh, the NetSuite time phase demand planning feature, that was the only option available in NetSuite until about a year ago, um, you really should be considering the move to use the, 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 the MRP, Material Requirements Planning Engine in NetSuite. It is just leaps and bounds ahead and, and way better. And it, it offers a lot of solutions to the challenges that, that we used to have with the old uh, time phase supply and, and demand plan. So I just want to talk a little bit about that today, mostly just to remind you, we are happy to help you with this. So if you are using the, the, the time phase model, uh, reach out, Andrew um, can help you facilitate and we can help you with how to transition because it, it, isn't, it isn't that hard and there's a lot of benefits. Um, on the left hand side of the screen, you'll notice it says replenishment method. That's where uh, currently you may have time phase or reorder point. Now, if you turn on MRP, you'll be able to select requirements planning. Uh, there's another new thing called planning item category. So it's, it, we need to uh, put our items into categories for planning purposes. And then on the item location configuration file that's on your right hand side, there's a few new fields that, that is required to be uh, managed. I guess. What I want to say with this is just like in the past, we had to set the DRP settings for each item by location. You still have to do that when you use MRP. That, that doesn't change. Um, there's just a few more fields to be, uh, to be managed now. Right, we'll jump on to the next one. Now, um, how does it work and why am I so keen on using the new MRP feature? So we have what's called a supply plan repository, which we didn't have before. The, the challenge in the past with NetSuite's uh, supply and demand plan was always that we were interrogating uh, live transitional data when we ran our uh, supply plans overnight. Um, and that could take quite a while if you had a lot of items or a lot of locations in your distribution network. So what we've done now is we've uh, essentially taken a, um, a cased version, a snapshot of all uh, items and all transactions and put them into a separate database, if you will, and called that the supply plan repository. Now, what this does is it enables us to interrogate our uh, data that we use for demand planning um, instantly and quickly and, and more flexibly. We do have to obviously remember to update our um, supply plan um, because it, it's just a, a, a picture at a point in time. Previously, there was no way to script the running of supply plans. Now NetSuite has a native functionality. Uh, if we jump to the uh, next page, um, Andrew, where uh, we can refresh our planning repository, right? So we can do a complete refresh, which is have a look and take all items and all transactions in a given period, or we can do just a net change a refresh. So if there's any sort of IT nerds in the room back in the day when we had on-site servers and you do your overnight backup, you can do just incremental backup. It's essentially that, right? It'll just refresh the changes that have, that have happened. And what this means is it is a lot faster, it is a lot smoother, and it can also be scheduled. So uh, no more um, 
do we have to come in early on Monday morning to run it or stay late Friday? Um, you know who you are. I'm looking at you. We can fix it. Hit me up. <laughs> um, so it's just amazing, right? Because it's a lot of these features that we've been screaming out for are now here, um, which I am I'm quite happy uh, about. And hopefully we can we can help you guys with, with this. Um, on to the next one. So supply plan definition. What's a supply plan definition? We didn't have that before. So once we've set our MRP settings on, on each of our um, items and we've um, refreshed our planning repository, this is a considered like a pair of glasses. So now how do I want to look at my data for demand planning purposes? So we can say, well, I want to look at Perth and I can see, do I want to look at sales order demand? Do I want to look at sales order and demand plans? We can still load demand plans and put in our forecast just the same. Do I want to consume my forecast? Do I not want to consume my forecast? And um, do I want to generate pegging? And the one that says generate pegging is, is really um, key. So if we um, jump ahead a little bit, Andrew, to the next page. One more, please. Uh, just going to skip that one. Yeah, so, so this is what the MRP workbench does. So essentially, once we've set our supply plan definition, we take generate pegging, and then we run our supply plan, and then it fires into this MRP workbench. So on the right hand side here, there's, there's a photo of an item that is dropped down. So it, again, this is just a screenshot. It's not very intuitive, but basically, whereas before we had the, the gross requirement inquiry report, we could select one item, one location, and we could see what was happening. And it was a, a bit of a painful experience trying to be a planner with just that. Um, so in the past, we have worked on building custom reports to make that easier. Now NetSuite has gone and, and, and built it for us, which is amazing, right? So when we enable pe pegging on our supply plan definitions, we'll be able to see full visibility on our supply and demand. So, hey, there's a work order here. It's meant to supply this particular sales order. There's a purchase order for items that are going to go into this work order. And everything is fully pegged 360, which is amazing. Um, there's a lot more functionality in here that I'm not going to go into now, but just needless to say, the GRI, the way it should have been. So you can see um, exception messages, action messages, what you should be doing if things are, are delayed, what the possible impact is. You can do a lot of what-if scenario plannings um, as well. All right, on to that one there. So that, that'll be enough on MRP. Again, hit me up if, if you're interested. Talk to Andrew and we, we, can, uh, we can help you with that. If you already have demand planning, it's part of your system. There's nothing um, required. Um, this I mentioned last time as well. Again, I just want to reiterate that um, in the past, when dealing with demand planning, we would have to load a work order lead time on the DIP settings on the item by location. Um, now, we don't have to do that anymore. So if you use routing and work centers and WIP, NetSuite will automatically, dynamically generate the work order lead time for you, which is um, handy and impressive, I think. Um, manufacturing mobile, again, there's not much new here, but I just want to drum the drum and say, or hammer the drum or whatever the expression is. This is really cool. So NetSuite has an out of the box uh, manufacturing mobile app support. It just works. So if you have, if you're doing work orders in NetSuite, you can use the app. You don't need an advanced manufacturing. We just need the SCM uh, suite app bundle, which is, is free anyway when you have manufacturing. Um, it's there, it's working, it's very cool. Again, we can help you guys if, if it's something you're um, interested in. And now we get to what's actually new. <laughs> so there is uh, the manufacturing mobile suite app has been updated to now support barcode scanning of serialized uh, component. So before you'd have to enter or select from a dropdown, it did support lots, but not serialized uh, inventory, and it does now. Um, and next slide, please, Andrew. Uh, another one that I'm very, very excited about, Purchase to Project Suite app. What does it do? Um, previously, when running projects in NetSuite and raising a purchase order, we need to tag the project on the line or, or the header level in order to associate it to a set project. Now we can actually raise purchase orders straight from the project and then tag it as an expense against the project, um, which, is, um, which is really cool, I think. Uh, we need to install the Suite app. There's no cost associated. We just need to install it and, and can, uh, can use that. All right. Um, and the last one I think I'm going to be talking about is there's a new lot auto numbering suite app. Again, I'm not going to go into too much detail here. If you use them into a detail, you're familiar with the pop-up where you select 
the lot and the bin. What this lets you do is we can add more um, customized parameters to be tracked when inventory details are entered. There's a list of them there. Um, you can look at them later, you can look it up in help. The main thing is um, we now have the ability to customize uh, lot parameters, not just um, expiry date and the bin and, and the lot number or the serial number. That is, I think, all for the news. There's a few questions that I'll just try and answer, uh, Andrew. So can you comment on any enhancements for demand planning to handle variation of plan, i.e. a probability distribution of demand outlook? Um, yes, I can, but it's gonna take more time than I have today. Um, so reach out to Andrew. We can talk about what your specific uh, requirements are, but we can, the, um, the supply plan definition, we can have as many of those as we want. So we could look at different supply plan definitions to see what would the impact be on our business given those parameters. Um, if we're looking at particular transactions, whether we put them in there, what would happen? Yes, that's doable as well. But there's a lot of ways to accomplish that. That's probably, I can't answer here, but we're happy to, um, to assist at a later stage. Thanks, Lars. Really appreciate it, mate. No, um, no more questions for you. Cool. Thank you. Nice to see everyone. Too bad we're not having beer afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> Good on you, mate. Michelle, hello. Hi, Andrew. How are you? I'm awesome. I bet you can't wait to figure out what question I'm going to ask you. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, how long have you been working with uh, NetSuite now and Liberate? Yep. Um, so I've been with NetSuite for, well, since 2018. So that's about five years. Um, and been with Liberate IT since 2019, January 2019. So going nearly on years. Um, nice. Mainly focusing on WD implementations. There you go. That's cool. All right. We're going to talk all things Sweet Analytics today. Yes. So. Fantastic. Yeah, you can go over to the first slide. Um, so before we start, I'm just going to do a bit of a recap on what we saw in 2021.1. So in NetSuite 21.1, uh, NetSuite introduced native language support for suite analytic workbooks, letting users analyze and explore business data and associated workbooks. Uh, workbook fields in their native language or language of choice. The conditional formatting um, was also a functionality that they released. It allowed users to highlight workbook to pivot tables and tables um, and table cells with colors based on numeric values uh, different for specific cells and ranges. This helps call attention to important data points such as deadlines, at risk tasks, uh, budgets that are going over, um, et cetera, and also making um, large data sets a lot more digestible by visualizing and organizing data with large um, tables. Then they've also released, oh, still on the, the old back to the first one, sorry. <laughs> So then they've also released calculated measure um, functionality and that supports filtering with, uh, within pivot tables, letting users see results from two periods side by side and conduct uh, comparative analysis faster and with more confidence. Uh, we can go over to the next slide now. So tweet 2021.2 will include the following enhancements. Um, so we're going to see data set linking in Suite Analytics Workbook. Um, there's a new feature called Cache Data and Data Sets. Uh, you can finally export um, pivot tables in CSV format. Uh, and icons have been added to the Suite Analytics Workbook uh, conditional formatting. So let's have a look at what each one of these will mean. Um, first up is the data set linking. Uh, so it's sweet, sweet script uh, and it's called data set link module. So you can link two data sets if they have at least one field that shares common data, such as that. We hand over to the next slide. 
You can do this even if the, the data sets are based on record types that do not have predefined common keys in the analytics data source. For example, assume you want to compare sales rep quotes, uh, quotas to their actual sales. In this case, you would need to create two data sets, one based off the sales actually invoiced and the other based off a quota record type. These record types have fields uh, with co common data such as date and department. However, you cannot join them in the data set because they do not have predefined keys in the analytic data source. This um, so more importantly, even if you could join the record types, the one-to-many relationship of sales rep to transaction would produce, would produce unwanted data duplication of results. This happens because there's no data aggregation in the data set and all possible results are displayed. This is by design since, nets, uh, since data sets are meant to be used as a source um, data for visualization, such as pivot tables and charts, uh, where you can define the aggregation. Uh, you can move over to the next slide. Contrast with link data set aggregation occurs based on the field that you use to build your visualization prior to the result, results being displayed in the workbook. For example, in the case of sales quotas versus actual sales, you can define the link using the sales rep name and the date. Because quotas are created on a monthly basis, if you, are, um, then, if you then use the date field from the quota record type, build your pivot table, the results are aggregated at the month level before they are displayed in the visualization. Next slide. So just a few key important notes um, to, to be aware of when the new release happens is currently you cannot um, edit the data set uh, links from the workbook user interface. Uh, if you do want to create or edit these links, you need to use the Sweet Script data set, um, data set link module. Next slide. Moving on, cache data and data set feature. So in previous releases, data and data sets uh, was loaded in real time over you access data. With the cache data and data set featured enabled in your account, you can use cache responses, uh, a cache response mode to load data in your data set. The load time of your data set and workbook is improved when the data is loaded from cache data. So really important to know is this will refresh automatically every 60 minutes. Next slide. So accounts with cached um, in data set featured enabled have the following two options um, available to them. So you've got real-time response. This is the standard response in your previous releases with data, setting, data sets using the most uh, current results available. By default, all data sets use real-time response. Cache response is a faster data set response. The data set is loaded from stored data to improve load time. And then this is the one that will update every 60 minutes. So any user with access to your data set can enable or disable cache response mode. Enabling or disabling um, data mode only affects the current data set and only for the user that enables the data mode. So in order to enable the data mode on your um, workbook or data set, you have to either create um, a new workbook or a data set, um, or you can edit an existing one. Be sure when you do create one that you save it first, else you will not actually see this cache response. So um, if you, oh yeah, we're still on the previous one, Andrew, yeah. Um, so if you click on the real-time response next to the data set date stamp, um, you can just click the cache response and then apply to your workbook and, slide, and save. Next slide. Next, you also have the data set uh, cache management page. This lists all data sets using cache data mode, impact workbooks, 
workbook owner status and other information. You can disable data um, uh, or disable cache data mode or any data set from this page. Only users with administrator role can access the data set um, cache management page. To access this page, you have to navigate to the data sub tab on the analytics um, homepage. And then if you move to the actions column, click the more icon to open the panel uh, and click on the data set cache management page. And then the page will open. Next slide, please. To enable this feature, you have to navigate to setup company enable features and then navigate to the analytics sub tab and check the cache data in data set checkbox. Next slide. Um, we have the following feature, which is allowing um, pivot tables to be exported using CSV files. Now, prior to 2021.2, you could only export tables and charts in CSV files. Uh, this will now be available um, for all uh, workbook visualizations. So it includes table views, charts, and pivot tables. One thing to do, take note of, is when it does export, it just exports the raw data, it doesn't actually um, export the, the conditional formatting or anything like that. So um, you would need to um, add that back on your um, CSV file if you, if you want those. Next slide. Great. In addition to colors, you can now apply icons to your workbook table view and the table results using conditional formatting. Depending on the conditions you set up, you can apply conditional formatting to groups of results or individual results. You can also apply conditional formatting to any fields containing numbers or string values, including custom, for, custom formula fields and calculated measures. Great. So. It, I'm going to leave some time for questions. Michelle, looks like you've nailed it. We've got no questions for you. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Look, as, as with everyone else, if you've got any questions that are come to you after, after we move on to the next session, um, uh, feel free to put it in Q&A and Michelle will jump on and answer any of those for you. So thanks so much, Michelle. Really appreciate it. Uh, I am now going to hand over to Jonathan with some technical updates. Hello, Jonathan. Hi, Andrew. How's it going? I'm awesome, mate. Thank you very much. Okay. Hey, let's uh, let's quickly move on, shall we? I'm, I've done a bad job of keeping to time. Perfect. Um, so a couple of key technical pieces I want to touch on today. Um, the first one Mira spoke about, which is the support for the new customer scheduled maintenance. The piece I want to point out there is you can also reschedule your move to the uh, Oracle Cloud infrastructure as well. Um, in addition to that, the workbook API is now generally available. So that is your suite analytics. So all those nifty new tools that you could do like building data sets and connecting them together, that is what can now be built out in suite scripts to allow you to do that. Um, in addition, you've got additional REST endpoints that have now become general availability. And that one there is the, the query service. So as you can see, so NetSuite is continuing to improve their REST API endpoint with more and more becoming general available. Um, on top of this, you've also got the release of the Suite Cloud extension for Visual Studio, if that is your preference for development work. Um, they're probably the key highlights. Um, from a technical point of view, thank you. Short, sharp and sweet, Jonathan, love That's it. it. Thank, you. thank you so much, really appreciate it, mate. Hey, I am now going to quickly move on to Hemel with some helpful tips. Hemel, hello. Hi, hello, thank you so much, Andrew. So I thought I'll just share my video while I'm uh, gonna present this. It's just a way, way of saying hello to everyone. Uh, I think most of the consultants had an opportunity to meet all of our customers, uh, whereas I haven't and I joined just recently. So I thought this way I can at least introduce myself. Um, I don't have any new features or new items from the feature release uh, to come in here, but I just wanted to present a couple of nice to know things, um, which I think will be handy for you. Um, 
So ever wondered if you would have ever wondered about your emails that are going to your customers, your invoices or your communications that is going to your customers, and you're ever wondering whether those emails are actually getting to your customers or not. Uh, if you are, then if you want to have a look at them, NetSuite has this perfect uh, facility through setup company and sent email list. And on the right hand side, that page will open up as you can see through the image over here. Uh, it's it's going to show you all the emails that are sent for the last 30 days. Now, this is a view. Uh, you can just customize it and add a couple of filters like status and send date. Uh, it's really handy to see, like you can change the status of those uh, in that filter to the emails that are not sent. And if you want to see by today or yesterday, you can do that. And, you know, if you click on that number over there, as per my uh, annotation over there, you'll be able to get more information. And this was a perfect example. When I clicked on it and I scrolled down to that page, I could see that um, error message in yellow, which says there's a permanent failure, bad destination mailbox address. So, I mean, whosoever the customer address that was added in there, it was an incorrect email address and hence the email did not go there. So if you ever wondered about your emails, here's a list, here's a way of doing it. And uh, thanks Andrew, the next page is another little bit of, uh, you know, tidbit, which uh, NetSuite offers us, which I really think is really fantastic to see is that now and then uh, when NetSuite sends emails out, and if customer's email address or uh, the server is not working, those emails, email addresses could get bounced and the NetSuite could actually put it in a block list and they block it for X amount of time. So if you ever wanna see, like if a customer comes up to you saying that, oh, you, I was waiting for your invoice and haven't received it yet, then uh, you know, have a look in here as well. Go to list relationship bounced email addresses and you'll see a list of email addresses which are in a block list and you can go in there. And if customer says that, um, you know, your end customers say that all of your uh, their email addresses are working well, then just uh, remove them from this list and NetSuite will next time will try to send that email. All right, that's about it from support. Um, you know, th that's it for me. If you have any questions, fire away. And yeah, thank you, Andrew. Thanks so much, Emil. Really appreciate it, mate. Again, short, sharp and sweet. Uh, really appreciate it. Hey, that uh, ends the formal part of our webinar today. So. Look, a big thank you to all of our consultants to jump on and uh, uh, share their knowledge with everyone. Uh, I really appreciate that. That's not something that just comes together in five minutes. It uh, takes up quite a bit of time. So I really appreciate the time that everyone puts into, into this. And, and of course, Hemel, our support manager, and Paul Beatty. Uh, thank you to the Nest Week guys for um, jumping on and, and saying a few kind words about Liberate and, and explaining uh, why we won the the Customer Excellence Award, uh, really important to us, uh, as is the ongoing support that we give you all. So uh, we do have uh, a session lined up for any new users to NetSuite that uh, Hemel will be uh, going through with you. Uh, so if you're new and have never gone through the NetSuite upgrade process, we'll, um, we'll do that shortly. So uh, we'll kick off that in about uh, you know 30 seconds time. So go grab a glass of water, sit down, relax, and um, and uh, and you'll listen to him all go through all things, the NetSuite upgrade process. But uh, for everyone else, uh, thank you very much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Um, if you've got any follow-up questions, feel free to reach out to me um, uh, or contact support desk. They'll, they're very good at helping out uh, as well. And um, And goodbye for now. All right, so anyone that's left over who is interested to know about our release process, about NetSuite's release process, um, please give another 15 to 20 minutes. I'll try my best to be as brief and succinct as possible. But I think there's some important information in here which will be really of benefit to you. So please hang in there and uh, let's go through that. Okay, so to set the scene of this presentation, so, as we all know, so NetSuite is a multi-tenanted cloud-based SaaS product. So, and you know, as any as any software product, it needs its upgrades, and the upgrades of NetSuite is part of your license fee. So you don't have to pay anything for it, um, but you know, it is pushed by the vendor. It comes to you, and all customers are on the same version. Now, NetSuite does a great job in upgrading all of its customers 
consistently year on year. And you know, no one's left behind. It's easier for us in support to provide that um, support to all these customers because from our point of view, everyone's on the same version. Now comparing that to 10, 15 years back, you know, when you had you may have had an on-prem system or a SaaS solution, which when they they did an upgrade, you may be version locked. That's not the story with NetSuite. So just to set that scene as to how the upgrades are done, it is uh, everyone's on the same version, uh, except of doing when the upgrades are done by itself, right? There are phases in there. So that's what I'll talk on the next slide over here, where the upgrades, there's a schedule in here. So uh, as you all know, uh, there are two upgrades in a year uh, with the Q1 and Q3. In Q1, and uh, sorry, in Q3 this year, uh, every year, there are three phases in there. Uh, the upgrades are done by NetSuite uh, as part of the process of doing it by hemispheres. So there's a Northern Hemisphere where Americas get done and in Southern Hemisphere where APJ, JPEG, and JPEG are taken care of. And uh, we we normally get in the second wave over there. And there are three waves uh, in the in, for the second, uh, the third quarter upgrade, which is for the mid-August, mid-September or mid-October. So, Generally, the upgrades are done on the weekends, and you will get notified as to when the upgrades are done. I'll tell you more about it in a second. Um, I just want to, want to take a moment about telling you about the timings, right? So uh, NetSuite will, no will normally say they will do the upgrade during 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Pacific time on the weekend, uh, which will be in turn to be of our 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. Uh, on a Saturday or Sunday. And, you know, it's normally about 30 minutes. So when you know there is a release planned, try not to schedule any work on your end. Um, just you know, uh, know that that there will be a downtime. Yeah, no one will be able to work any uh, anything in your NetSuite production portal at that particular weekend. All right. So uh, again, to reiterate, uh, which is important to know, uh, it's an upgrade of your whole system. Uh, by default all functionality is actually provisioned as switched off. So NetSuite does another, and as part of its upgrade process, it wants to make sure that your system just works flawlessly. Uh, and the next day on the Monday that you come into office, it should just work as before. Um, but, you know, and, and as part of its thinking, it's going to ensure that all the new functionality is switched off. Uh, it is up to you to go in and turn it on after your testing, right? So more on testing in a moment. But I want to make sure that you also know that when the upgrades go on, you will be asking, well, if everything is turned off, all the new function is turned off, so what, I shouldn't be too worried about it. Well, that's not quite the case with any software upgrade. Things can go wrong. And this presentation is all about making you prepared for it. So uh, here are some examples like date format could change. Some of your you know, scripts or automated workflows uh, could have a little bit of niggle over there. So which we might may need to get involved to get it resolved. So, you know, just for those reasons, we need to test things out. And I'll talk about that in a moment. All right, so how do we prepare or how do you prepare for the upgrade? Uh, again, NetSuite does a great job of preparing us and everyone who uses it for uh, its upgrade process. It starts sending emails six weeks beforehand, right? And it starts sending you those pop-up messages when you log in. So, uh, you know, again, something about these pop-up messages, like, you know, it's a human behavior. It's, you, you get so much more notifications uh, or emails, you tend to put them in a uh, little uh, filtered inbox. Uh, don't do so, especially during the release time. You know in the Q1 or Q3, there's gonna be a release. And for those timings, uh, ensure that you do read, I mean, I would say to read all of the pop-up messages and emails from NetSuite, but it, during the release time, it's good to be extra aware of it. Uh, NetSuite creates all these blogs and videos uh, to help us all out. And, uh, you know, it's important to read about that. And I'll show about that in a moment. It's also got a release portlet, which is a visual indication about where things are. And I'll show that in a moment as well. And, you know, at the end of the day, Libertati is there for you to, to help you out, right? Um, and we do these uh, you know, these user events, which are coincided with these release times to just to bring that awareness to you about things, what, what's changing towards you and, and how you can prepare to ensure that your business can, uh, keeps on working as before. All right, so let's jump into this release portlet. 
which is a really handy tool that uh, NetSuite provides. Um, it is on your dashboard. Uh, by default, it should be there, but if it's not there, go into your dashboard and just hit personalize and add that in. Um, and you know, it's like any other portlet, you can minimize it, but during your release times, right? So during your Q1 and Q3 times, please do keep it uh, you know, enlarged and keep an eye on it. So I wanna bring your attention to this uh, square on the top right, uh, which is this one, and I'll, I'll go to the next slide over here. It tells you about which release is gonna come towards you, what's the upgrade uh, phase for it, or on which date it's gonna be. So at this very moment, when I took this screenshot yesterday, I did not have a date for Librit IT's NetSuite upgrade uh, date on it, right? But I do know it's gonna be in mid-October, and the date's gonna come. So, you know, our consultants are already aware about what's changing. They're already testing and preparing things for you to consume, but the same rate, like you can do the same thing for yourself by looking at this portlet over here. All right, so I wanted to, um, as we present this, like when you come to this present, uh, to this portlet, I wanna start from easiest to the hardest part. Well, you know, when I say easiest, it's in the point of view from the time. So. Sneak peek is literally the word sneak peek. It just gives you a quick way of seeing about what's changing. So if you're interested, like, I mean, if you're short on time, come into it, click on sneak peek, and it gives you access to all these NetSuite blogs, which they have written about what, what changes that are coming towards you. They are quick five minute read. So really no excuse to not know about what things are coming towards you. Okay, so the next thing is, um, you know, going back to our portlet in dashboard and looking at release notes over here. Uh, when we look at the release notes, this is what our consultants have looked at to prepare this user event. And it's a deep dive on all the changes that have happened. They've taken screenshots and presented to you. Uh, you can do that by yourself as well. If you've got that much amount of time, definitely go ahead and do that. Or if you, you know, you know something's changing and you start consuming it and then you go, oh, I wanna read about it. So here's a quick way of getting to that point. Uh, release preview login. So I'll come to that in a moment. It's a, in short, it's a, a way of, actually I'm on this slide already. That's this next slide over here. So release preview login or release preview. What is release preview? I'm gonna take a different approach to, to this. So you may have heard of Sandbox. Uh, it's, a, in a, it's a separate environment, um, which you normally have to pay for it. It's a license that you pay on a year on year to get a sandbox environment. Release preview is another environment that you get, which is given to you for free for the release preview time. And just to wanna reiterate this definition of it, which is really important to me, I thought, is that it's a complete backup of your production account. I'll, hold that thought on that production account for a moment, but it's a complete backup for sure. And it's a standalone system, it's a standalone environment running the latest software, latest release from NetSuite. Um, and that's a really important thing for you to uh, get your hands on to, you know, six weeks before when NetSuite starts sending all these email notices, it's that's the time when you should actually get into a release preview account, get it provisioned and start testing things out. Okay, and one thing which I wanna say is that it's totally separate environment. I wanna reiterate the fact it's a totally separate environment from the production of Sandbox environment. It, you normally, uh, you know, yeah, it says three to four weeks uh, before the upgrade, you get access to it and it lasts for another two weeks. It is taken away without a uh, warning. So the reason why I put it in red over there, it's very important because we've had, yeah. I've had stories actually. So I have not experienced it myself, but I've had stories where, customers may have actually done their live transactions in a release preview. Uh, I'm gonna try my best to make sure that you don't fall into the same uh, you know, mishap over there because there's a, there are ways of doing that. But you know, just wanna make sure that you just gotta be mindful that's a separate environment and, and as to which environment that you're working in. So just know that. And now in last release or year, uh, release before that, uh, NetSuite introduced this facility where you can actually copy down your sandbox environment to the release environment. So what that means and why would you do that, right? So uh, normally you would wanna do the copy or a sandbox refresh of your production environment. Uh, 
So, but in some instances, you may be working on a particular workflow or a process or business process uh, in your sandbox environment, and your sandbox environment by that time is already ha having the latest data from your production environment, all right? Uh, but you are getting close to the release time, and you're saying to yourself, it would, it would, it would be pretty beneficial for us to test things out our new business flow in the release environment, but with the sandbox data, but with the new uh, process that you're working in. And hence, you have this ability of getting the copy of your sandbox into release. Okay. So how do you get your hands onto a release preview? Uh, it's if you decide to get a copy of your production environment or your sandbox environment, you have to be in that particular environment and click on setup, company, and release preview. And you click on that button, which is on the right hand side, which says release uh, request release preview. It's an opt in facility. It is not given to you for free. Again, it is a free uh, facility uh, for us all to use to test uh, all the new features that NetSuite is sending towards us. All right. And how do we switch between accounts? So if you have access to Sandbox, then you would already know that it's just a matter of uh, changing roles. And it's on the top right where you go to your name and you know choose a different role. For release preview, you've got a handy RP as a uh, visual indicator that you're switching into it. So again, coming to that point as to how to avoid that mishap of doing your normal day-to-day -day transactions into a release preview or sandbox environment, uh, you know, first of all, you gotta know that you, you have to switch a role and you go into this release preview role. Um, but let's say if you are logged in and you come into the release preview role, this, this tree screenshot shows you the distinction between our Liberate IT's production environment versus the release preview uh, environment. Uh, first off, the logo is different. So this is what NetSuite will do for you. Uh, it will replace the logo with release preview as a word on it. So you know when you log in uh, or when you are logged in and the release preview is visually it's there. Second thing is we have gone a step ahead and changed the color scheme of it. So, and I would encourage you to do that. Um, you know, simply going to dashboard, set preferences and changing the appearance. Uh, there's a color scheme uh, process over there. So choose any of the color, right? And um, so you know, and your staff members know that if they do happen to go, if the other administrators, they happen to go into release preview, they know that they are working in it. So definitely avoid that mishap of doing your live transactions and release preview. All right, so key pointers again uh, about release preview. Um, so when you are in release preview, uh, something to, to be aware of that like, you know, your integrations uh, may need to change the endpoints over there. So uh, let's say you had an integration in your production um, and, you know, they may be connecting to, to a production environment or production environment on a, the other party or other vendor. Now you would want to change that on a demo account in the release preview so that you don't get any data or production environment in your release uh, preview. So it's important that you do those changes. Uh, it's also important to be aware that the bundles may not be the same and they, in between production and release preview. So just an FYI about it. And also when you do log into release preview, the performance may be a little bit slower when you initially start off, right? So that's just when the systems are uh, getting into the gear. All right, um, just going on to that, uh, the, you know, going from amount of time that you've got uh, to do the training on. Now, if you've got some more time, then there is really training resources, which are really handy videos that NetSuite creates. NetSuite puts in a lot of effort in creating these videos. They are deep dive, a bit done by the product managers of NetSuite. And as you can see by this image, they are the latest versions over, over here. And like, in the middle over here, there's this little YouTube. It is about 40 minutes long. So a little tidbit from my end, um, I recently discovered that, you know, you can up the speed of your video that you're listening to. And it, it's, it's a, you know, it's like driving on a motorway. Once you drive on that speed, you get used to it. Uh, it's like that, you, you increase the speed of this YouTube and your mind will get used to it. Uh, it's just really, you wanna sit back and listen to it. Uh, and you you know about, you'll get to know about all the commentary between product managers and you'll get to know the reasoning about why a change was done. So it's really handy to do so. Okay, so the another key part which I wanted to talk about 
uh, it's about test plans and you would access the test plans via the release preview guide. And when you go to that page on the left hand side, you'll get the screenshot about release preview guide. The, the point that you're interested about is the recommended test plan. And when you get, get in there, there is this Excel file that you can download. It's a test, uh, test plan. Uh, it's a template of a test plan in an Excel file that NetSuite has created for us. Now you may be aware about test plans as part of your user acceptance testing, um, but you know it, I would just take a moment to drive this in where you know it's so important to have these test plans, right? And you would already have it. Uh, you would have created it once as part of your initial implementation. It, it, test plans are you know all the business processes that you are so important to you, your critical business processes. So the screenshot at the back over here, it's an example one that NetSuite created, and it's giving you two or three uh, worksheets in that Excel file with all these extra uh, blank ones, which you can fill in by yourself. Right, so about the test planning, right? Like about what it should have. Uh, these are your critical workflows. And if you wanna know, I mean, initially you should have this documented, but if you're creating new, then you can, you need to ask your business owners about it. Um, and you wanna start visually drawing these uh, process flows or test plans and uh, the business processes, right? So you wanna, you know, just a little tidbit, right? You can use a program called Lucid Charts. It's a web-based uh, app, which will allow you to draw out all these process flows. And once you have, you know, visually articulated them, then you can put them uh, in a written manner into in that Excel file and then start uh, using it and executing it. So it's an yet another uh, tool or, or a mechanism that NetSuite provides us for the success of consuming this new releases that have been given to us. All right, last but not the least, Liberate IT. We are here to help you out with any questions that you may have during the release process or any new functionality that you wanna use. So that's about it from me. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, fire away. And over to you, Andrew. Thanks, Emil. Thanks so much. Uh, Yvonne's got a question uh, just mentioning that um, <clears throat> they can't change the color of, of their environment anymore. I do remember that from a, couple of releases ago, but maybe uh, uh, we could just have a look at that for her as a as a um, support case mate. That'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. Definitely. Fantastic. Yeah, I'll get, well, get that... in touch with you directly. Brilliant. That, uh, that is fantastic. Well, that wraps up uh, the both the formal and informal part of uh, today's session. So look, again, thanks everyone for joining today. Really appreciate it. Hope you found that last section helpful. Uh, it's something we do each each release, and uh, I think it's it's a useful exercise to go through so that you uh, uh, know what what is best practice. We know that a lot of customers, um, with the reliability of NetSuite updates, they it's easy to do that work and feel like ah, I don't really want to do that again because everything was fine the last three or four times I did it. But uh, it's always a good good practice to go through just to uh, be a hundred percent sure that there's no stoppage to your business as uh, as an update occurs. Okay, well, thank you again for everyone uh, for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Uh, and um, I am going to be signing off for now. Okay, bye. We hope this video gave you the information you were after. If you have any further questions, get in touch with us using the links in the description. At Liberate IT, we can provide free consulting to understand your business system requirements, understand your company growth plans, and provide free NetSuite demonstrations. For more information, visit our website.